In general, the nature of the perceiving axes can be described in this way. SENI asks, what is the bottom line of the raw data? NESI asks, what is the truth behind the perspectives? So these two attitudes can be summed up as conjecturing and examining respectively. The one axis seeks to discover, envision, or predict the potential course, introverted intuition, plotted by their various raw experiences of things, extroverted sensation. Obviously the image I am summoning here is that of a scatter plot and line of best fit, though one could also summon the image of a researcher recording their observations and then forming overarching conclusions abstracted from that data. On the NI side, a good example would be Karl Marx, who spent hours upon hours researching and observing social and economic conditions in society, from which data he developed his comprehensive theories of capital and dialectical materialism. On the SE side of this, a good example is Dale Carnegie, who, as celebrity types has pointed out in one of their Function Axes articles, is one of many SE types who concretize their wealth of experiences into practical wisdom. For instance, Dale Carnegie's book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Now the other axis seeks to discover, cognate, or comprehend the true nature of things, introverted sensation, by compositing the uniting elements between various creative perspectives on things, extroverted intuition. The image I like to use here is of a diagram showing multiple perspectives of a 3D object but in two-dimensional space, where each perspective conceals something in order to reveal something else. A good example of this mentality on the NE side can be found in the theories of Michel Foucault, who himself describes society as a series of power structure grids which you can lay on top of the truth in order to reveal some things, but then conceal others. And our goal essentially should be to experiment with various power grids to discover the true limits or bounds of how human society can successfully be structured. An example from the SI side could be Martin Heidegger's discussion of being or existence and how many different perspectives are required to observe it and get a full picture of it because of our extremely subjective position in relation to the nature of our own existence, not to mention existence within the sh ever-shifting realm of time. Overall, SENI is much more, we could say, trusting of what we call empirical or collected data, particularly data from direct experience, which is why, as Celebrity Types was the first to point out, it tends to feel much more intense and singular of vision, because it is perfectly happy with direct observation and direct conjecture from that observed data. As Celebrity Type says, the person will stress one point of view, an eye, which is indeed frequently the viewpoint that generates the greatest yield here and now, SE. The singularity of observation involved will frequently lend a manifest and immediate quality to the SE and I type's observations, which in turn tends to make them convincing. This is because, um, this is uh, not part of the quote, but this is because SENI is naturally hooked into and derived from a direct and photographic view of the world. A dominant NI type, for instance, is constantly conjecturing from whatever data they have. It's what they do, just naturally, and that's why these types will often feel like they have a lot to say on topics regardless of their actual expertise, because they can still conjecture an intriguing point of view from what little data they have. They're just drawing lines of best fit. Of course, depending on their skill, luck, and their sample size, it is not uncommon for these lines of best fit, as it were, to be off by some degree. In fact, NI types are often used to this being the case, and at least in my experience, can sometimes conjecture about how accurate their own conjectures are likely to be depending on how much data they feel they've acquired. SE types conjecture like this too, believe it or not, uh, just not as consistently or as grandly, but it is part of what can lend that peculiar air of surety or confidence to the ESTP speech or the driven spontaneity of the ESFP's decisions. These types feel that they see something before them in glorious clarity and sharpness. 
how long that vision will last varies. Meanwhile, the NESI axis is not so trusting of direct experience, which is hardly a mystery because their perception of reality is introverted, meaning they aren't interested in direct and photographic reality, but in the ideal versions of experiences abstracted from reality. For instance, Socrates' search for the overarching idea of everyday things like dogs, beds, piety, etc., as opposed to individual instances of these things. This is why, as Celebrity Types also points out, quote, the person will also be more careful and meticulous, as I, because there is an unconscious striving to contribute one's observations to building a system which is valid not just in the here and now, but which is perceived to be true in general to generate the type of knowledge that could conceivably end up in a future textbook on the subject." Unquote. The Axis makes use of NE's multifaceted nature to accomplish this. Now this helps illuminate a number of characteristics of SI and NE individually. Dominant SI types focus their energy on the apprehension and upholding of the truth as it is carefully and cautiously composited and systematically tested for weaknesses. Hence, their stereotypically thorough, cautious, and reserved nature, and why they are not so sure in sort of the idea-based conversation you tend to have with NI types, because of just that, they aren't sure. They, they want more information, they want to be sure, but they have much higher standards. Meanwhile, dominant NE types focusing their energy on the exploration and experimentation from various angles have the same presence of doubt, which is why NE types so often eschew dogma and may be perceived as intellectually flaky or capricious because they never truly commit to anything. It's all experimentation and exploration. Forming a composite truth, though their trouble is they never want to stop actually forming it. The introverted sensation type's trouble, on the other hand, is that they don't want to start doing the exploration. Concerning John Maynard Keynes and INTJ, it was said, quote, he spoke on a great range of topics, on some of which he was thoroughly an expert, but on others he had derived his views from the few pages of a book at which he had happened to glance. The air of authority was the same in both cases. Meanwhile, Bertrand Russell famously said that the whole problem with the world is that fools and fanatics are always so certain of themselves and wiser people so full of doubts. Bertrand Russell was an ENTP. Coincidentally, history records a number of ENTPs and INTJs very much disliking each other. Um, this is interesting. Now, this axis is also apparent in my own videos. You'll notice that there are quite a few of these videos, partly because I keep on redoing the same topics whenever I feel I've hit on a new perspective that I then can't help but explain as though it were my new doctrine, for lack of a better word, because it just suddenly seems so much more clear and beautiful and compelling than any previous perspectives, and I just want to get that pure idea out of myself. Literally, after I do a video on a compelling subject, if I did it well, I'll feel like I've emptied myself out of information and I'll very easily forget what it was that I just explained in that video. And the idea will dull, I'll start finding some problems with it, and over time I mull it over around with other material and then become bedazzled by the next rich synthesis. Thank you. I hope that this was useful to you. I hope that this uh, was interesting. I'll post your comments, criticisms uh, in the comment section below, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.